Now let's try to see how exactly we are going to do this merge operation. Suppose you are given these two sorted arrays. I'm going to call them as B and C. And you need to merge merge them to create a larger array called A. So how do you create this array A given these two sorted arrays B and C? Well, the way to do that is to first notice that the smallest element in both these arrays is going to be present at the head of the lists. The smallest element of B is 2 and the smallest element of C is 1. So the smallest element in both these arrays is going to be one of these two one of these two elements at the head of the two lists. We don't need to check the, uh, the, the values of the elements in the interior. So if we just compare 1 and 2, we know that 1 is less than 2 and we are therefore guaranteed that 1 is the smallest element overall in B or C. So we extract this smallest element and append it to our output array A. Now our list, now our second array C has three elements. Or equivalently you can imagine having pointers or indexes pointing to the current location in both B and C. And instead of deleting one, what we could do is we could simply increment the pointer to point to the next element in C. So imagine that these lists start from where the pointers are located. So the pointer is pointing to the head of the two lists. Now what is the next smallest element among the values that remain in B and C? Well again we need to look at just these two values at the head of the two lists, 2 and 4. Among these two, 2 is smaller. So we append 2 to the answer and delete it or equivalently increment the pointer to point to the next element. And between 3 and 4, 3 is smaller. So we append 3 to the answer and increment our pointer. Between 4 and 8, 4 is smaller. So we append 4 to the answer and increment the pointer to point to the next element. Between 5 and 8, 5 is smaller. So we append 5 to the answer and increment the pointer to the next element. Between 7 and 8, 7 is smaller. And at this stage now, the pointer, this particular pointer, has crossed the boundary of the array. So we know that there are no more elements in C. So whatever elements that remain in the other array, we can simply take them as they are and append them in the same order into the array A. So we'll take 8 and 9 and append them to A. So the resulting array A here is formed by merging together these two sorted arrays. And in each step of this merge procedure, we were only comparing the values of two elements. The elements that are pointed to by the two pointers we have, pointing to the head of the, both the lists. Now how much time would it take to create this array A from these two sorted arrays? So let's say the, the number of elements in B in general is P and the number of elements in C in general is Q. How many steps would our merge procedure take? Well, in each step, 
we are doing one comparison and appending one of these elements to the answer list and implementing the corresponding pointer. So these two or three elementary operations are going to take a constant amount of time, but they will be performed repeatedly. And how many times will these operations be performed? As many number of times as the number of elements in B plus the number of elements in C or equivalently the number of elements in the final array A which is nothing but P plus Q. So the amount of time that will be taken by the merge procedure will be some constant multiplied by P plus Q. So this is how we are going to merge the sorted arrays B and C to create the larger array A. Here's a description of the procedure that we just saw. We are going to initialize two pointers to point to the heads of the two arrays that we are merging, namely B and C. Then we'll compare the elements that the pointers point to. We'll pick the smaller element among the two and we will append that to the answer list which in this case is A. So A is the merged array currently under construction. And, append, and having appended the smaller element into A, we will increment the corresponding pointer. That's what we just did in the example that we saw. But we're going to repeat this step over and over until one of the two arrays is exhausted at which point we can simply copy the elements that remain in the other array into the merged array A. Here's the pseudocode for doing this merge operation. So we're going to merge the two arrays B and C. The array B has P elements the array C has Q elements and the merged array A is going to have P plus Q elements. Now before we begin examining the elements, we are going to initialize our pointers. So I sub B is the index into the array B. So this is a pointer indicating that it's pointing to the very first element of B. I sub C is the pointer to into the array C. And again, we are initializing it to 1 because the pointer is pointing to the very first element of C. So both these pointers, IB and IC, are pointing to the heads of the two lists. We also have this pointer I sub A, which is pointing into the array A. And Specifically, it's pointing in, it's pointing to the next empty slot in A, where the next element that we are going to insert is going to go. Then we have a loop. We have this while loop, which says, while I sub B is less than or equal to P, and I sub C is less than or equal to Q. In other words, while both the pointers into B and C have not yet reached the end of the array, while both these pointers are pointing to elements within B and C, that is neither of them has crossed the end of the array B or C. As long as this condition holds, we are going to repeat these statements. We will check whether the element that is being pointed to in the array B. So this is the element at the head of the array B. And we're going to compare the value of that with the first element of C. And if the, if, if the uh, value pointed to in B is less than the value pointed to in C, then we're going to append this value 
to our answer. So we take this value and we stick it into A of I sub A. And then we increment this pointer I sub B by 1. Else, that is if, if, if the value pointed to by the B pointer is not less than the value pointed to by the C pointer, but the other way around, it's greater than or equal to the value pointed to by the uh, C pointer. Then we'll have to append into our answer array A the element that is at the head of the C array. And so we'll take that value C of I sub C and stick it into the array A. And again, we'll implement this pointer to point to the next element in C. And of course, regardless of whether we add an element from B into A or C into A, we will need to implement the pointer into A to point to the next empty slot after we've done this insertion. Now this while loop will exit when one of these two elements, one of when one of these two indices crosses the boundary of their respective arrays. So when we come to this point, we know that either i sub b is equal to p plus 1 or i sub c is equal to q plus 1. Exactly one of these two conditions is going to hold because in each step we are incrementing either the value of i sub b or the value of i sub c depending on which of the two arrays we extracted the element from to insert into A. So if i sub b first crosses the boundary of b, then i sub b will become equal to p plus 1. If i sub c first crosses the boundary of c, then i sub c will be equal to q plus 1. So if i sub b is equal to p plus 1, that is, it's array b that was exhausted. We are going to copy the elements that remain in the other array, that is array c, into a. So the elements that remain in the other array c are given by indices i sub c to q, because there are ultimately q elements in c, and currently the pointer is pointing to i sub c. So the elements that remain from c are c of i sub c to q. And we're going to copy these elements into the array A. Now we know that ultimately the array A has to contain p plus q element. So the last index here, once we insert these elements into A, is going to be p plus q. And the first index is going to be um, this should have been i sub a, sorry. So i sub a is the current pointer into a. We're going to start from here and go all the way up to p plus q. In fact, the number of elements here is going to be exactly equal to the number of elements here. Now, if it's not i sub b that is equal to p plus 1, but if it's i if i sub c is equal to q plus 1, if, if, if the while loop was, was exited because of the other condition being true, i sub c being equal to q plus 1, then it means that the pointer into c crossed the boundary of the array c. So we have to take the elements that remain in the other array, that is array b, and copy them into the array a. The elements that remain in the array B start from index I sub B and they come and they go all the way up to index P because there are P elements in the array B. So we're going to take these elements and stick them into our merged array A. And again, our index into A starts at I sub, our current pointer into A is pointing at the index. Um, i sub a and once these elements from b are inserted 
A is going to have P plus two elements. So this will be the range of the indices into which we'll insert. So this is the pseudocode for the merge procedure. Let's now try to see how how merge sort works on a sample input of size 8. So we've already seen how the merge step works on two sorted arrays. We saw an example of that. Now we are going to see an example of how the full algorithm, that is the full merge sort algorithm, works on an input array A, which is given to be, which is given to have uh, these elements in it. 